bright moon, which seems so big and magical in the night sky, can affect our thoughts and emotions. The moon can also affect the behavior of animals. Many of them, such as certain fish and deer, often become more active when the moon is full. But perhaps the strongest effect of the moon is on the earth itself. The moon and earth have been dancing together for billions of years. The earth, nearly four times the moon's diameter, clearly leads the dance. But the moon, in turn, has important influences on earth. Let's look closer at the moon and its partner earth as they sweep through time and space together. There is no other place in space we know as well as the moon. It's close enough we can study a number of features with unaided eyes, and lots of details with a modest telescope. And more than that, the moon is the only place in space where humans have set foot. In a history book journey on July 20th, 1969, Neil Armstrong stepped from the Apollo 11 lunar lander onto the moon's surface. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. This trip, plus the five that followed over the next three years, brought back samples of moon rocks and dust and some out-of-this-world experiences. He's a big rooster tail out of all four wheels. And as he turns, he skids the back end breaks loose just like on snow. Come on back, John. The moon and Earth appear to have both formed at the same time about four and a half billion years ago from more or less the same type of materials. We are not exactly sure how the moon got started. Some astronomers believe the moon was created when a big glob pulled away from Earth. Other scientists think the moon developed separately from the same cluster of space particles that formed Earth. Still others suggest that the moon was created when Earth was struck by an object the size of a small planet. This object knocked chunks out of Earth and kept going. The chunks, however, eventually regrouped in Earth orbit to form the moon. At first, the moon and Earth were so hot they were molten, or melted. Gradually, their surfaces cooled to make crust. While the crusts formed, meteorites bombarded the moon and probably the Earth as well. Billions of years ago, space was much more cluttered with chunks of rocks and metal that collided with things in their path. The hardened crust of the moon preserves some of those countless early impact craters. Soon after the moon's crust developed, heat trapped below forced up volcanoes. These volcanoes spread lava across large areas of the moon, covering up some of the impact craters and forming the smooth, dark areas we today call Maria. Maria is plural for mare, which means sea. People once thought these might be oceans. Today, we know they are lava fields. Since the volcanoes ended their activity three billion years ago, the moon's surface has hardly changed. Earth's surface, on the other hand, has never stopped changing. 
The earth has not cooled as much, because it's bigger, and the crust remains thin and weak. In fact, the crust is cracked into about 20 pieces called plates. These plates creep over the molten rock below. By creating mountains, volcanoes, and other surface features, plate movements slowly but constantly change the look of our planet. Erosion also changes the Earth's surface. The moon lacks erosion causing surface water and wind. Although the moon and Earth had a similar start, they have taken quite different paths, mainly because of their difference in size. Moons are not unusual in the solar system. In fact, over 60 moons orbit other planets. Many of the moons around the solar system are only a few hundred miles or kilometers across, but a couple are larger than Mercury. Earth's moon is mid-sized among those of the solar system. However, in proportion to Earth, our moon is quite big. One of the moon's most noticeable effects on Earth is ocean tides. Tides are the regular rise and fall of the ocean's level. In the open ocean, the high tide raises the water level about three feet, or one meter over the low tide. Along coast, tide levels vary because of coastline shape. In particular, Shallow bays concentrate water into a small area and increase tide height. The world's highest tides, reaching nearly 45 feet or 15 meters, occur in the Bay of Fundy on Canada's east coast. The moon creates tides through the pull of its gravity. This pull is not enough to affect the Earth's crust much, but it's enough to cause a distinct bulge to the ocean. To appreciate the strength of gravity, feel how heavy a single bucket full of water is, then consider that the moon lifts part of an entire ocean. The high tide ocean bulge always stays with the moon as the moon travels around the earth about once a month. Meanwhile, Earth rapidly rotates once a day below. From high above the North Pole, we can compare the progress of the high tide to the rotating Earth. As we'll learn later, this difference in speed has important consequences. We also can see a second ocean bulge on the backside of the Earth. This is water less affected by the moon's gravity because it is farther away from the moon. When this backside bulge passes by, it creates a second high tide for the day. So every day, ocean coasts have two high tides and two low tides. The time at which high tides occur change slightly every day. Remember, as the Earth spins, the moon moves in its orbit around Earth. So by the time this point on Earth circles around again 24 hours later, the moon has moved ahead to over here. High tide at this point will have to wait until the Earth catches up with the moon, roughly 50 minutes later. Long ago, scientists noticed high tide bulges don't travel exactly in line with the moon. They travel slightly ahead of it. Why? As the Earth spins around quickly below the ocean bulge, friction between the Earth and water push the water ahead of the moon just a little. Over long periods, this friction and the timing difference between the Earth's rapid rotation 
and the moon's slow orbit affects both dance partners. Astronomers calculate that every century, because of the moon's pull, Earth's rotation takes about one five hundredth of a second longer. A billion years ago, a day on Earth was only 19 hours instead of 24. In another billion years, a day will have stretched to 30 hours. Earth's gravity has affected the moon even more strongly and pulled the moon into a synchronized orbit. That is, the moon rotates on its axis at the same rate as it orbits the Earth. As a result, we always see the same side of the moon. Astronomers think that maybe this side of the moon is slightly heavier than the far side and as a result is pulled harder by gravity. Though we always see the same side of the moon, the moon doesn't always look the same. Over a period of about 29 days, the moon goes through a series of phases. As shown here, the moon is lit by the sun and we see the reflected light. As the moon circles the earth, we see that lighted moon face from a different angle. When the moon is here, we see a big bright full moon. As the moon moves over here, the fullness gradually decreases. The line separating the light from dark sections is called the terminator. After about 14 days of travel, the moon has circled halfway around its orbit path, so it now lies between the Earth and Sun. We no longer see the moon at night. We call this moon phase the new moon. After the new moon, the moon swings past the sun and its face gradually waxes or increases in size until it's big, bright and full about two weeks later. When the moon passes in front of the sun, the moon casts a shadow. Usually the shadow misses Earth, but once in a while things line up so the shadow lands on us. We call this event an eclipse. The moon may only partly block the sun, which we call a partial eclipse. When the moon completely blocks the sun, we enjoy a rare full eclipse. By chance, we live in a time when the moon and sun appear the same size in the sky. However, the moon is slowly moving away from the Earth, about one and a half inches or three centimeters per year. In 10 million years, the moon will have moved so far away it no longer will affect tides. Eventually, the Earth's rotation and Moon's orbit will synchronize because the slow drag of tides and the Moon's gravity will gradually bring Earth's spin to a halt. Then, both Moon and Earth will dance, locked face to face until they cease to exist. Let's take a few minutes to review some of the things you learned in this video. In the following quiz, fill in the blanks with the correct words when you hear this tone. Good luck, and let's begin. 1. The moon orbits the Earth once every 29... ...while the Earth rotates on its axis once every 24... Two, true or false. 
The Earth and Moon seem to have formed from the same type of materials. Three. Is the moon's crust thicker or thinner than Earth's? Four. Maria on the moon are not seas as once thought, but fields of from volcanoes that are no longer active. Five, true or false, our solar system has over 60 moons. Six, the moon causes tides through the pull of its... Seven, because of the pull of the moon's gravity and the friction of tides, is the Earth's rotation speeding up or slowing down? Eight, we can't see the moon at night when it is between the sun and Earth. We call this phase the moon. Nine. In ten million years, the moon will have moved so far away, it will no longer affect... Ten. In the distant future, the Earth's... and the moon's orbit will synchronize, and the pair will face each other until they cease to exist.